welcome to Shamba Shape Up. We have traveled all over East Africa to find hard-working farmers. We want to celebrate them while giving them the knowledge they need. So they can adapt and make their farms more productive even while the climate changes. We want to support them to get better yields and increase their income. We will see how farmers can benefit from our experts' advice. While learning from each other in so many ways. Join us on these journeys and share in the farmers' experiences on the Shamba Shape Up Safari. Hello and welcome to Shamba Shape Up. This week we want to see the value of planning. Making a plan to save money to buy water tanks. Planning for a budget to buy animal feed. Making a five-year plan to make farm improvements. So Karo, if you have not made any plans, shall we go visit our farmer? I have that exact plan, Tony. All right. Today we're in Bomet and you are visiting David and Zeddy. And it looks like they're planning for our arrival, Tony. Yes, let's go meet them. David! Oh, oh welcome! Hi. David! Yes. Uh, how, how are, are you? you? Fine, fine, fine. Yes. Great. So, welcome. Thank, thank you, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Ah, welcome. nice place. This is nice. <laughs> you must be Zeddy. Yeah. 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 Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. Zeddy! Welcome. Yes. How are you? I'm fine. Good, yeah. good. Yeah. Thank welcome. you. Welcome. Yeah. David! Yes. What's this? You see, this is our plan. Our yes. vision. Mm -hmm. for five years. Mm -hmm. So we have the first year, mm -hmm. then the second year, the third, mm -hmm. fourth, then the fifth. Mm -hmm. Tell us about the final vision. What what, what are we seeing here? So mm -hmm. our hey, uh, vision here is we are targeting the, 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 the permanent house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Also we are targeting to have a car mm -hmm. for transporting milk. Yeah, this is very nice. This is a very good. nice vision mm -hmm. and would encourage farmers to do this kind of a chart mm -hmm. so that they can see in five years where they will be. Yeah. And we as Shamba Shape Up will do our level best to make mm -hmm. sure that you reach some of these goals. Yes. Mm -hmm. But for today, mm -hmm. yeah. what challenges are you having? Yeah, we have some challenges like AI. Most of the most time of when they the do, time we fail. It we fails fail. most of the fail. time. Yeah. All right, to you, Zedi. Yes. Tell me, what other challenges are you facing? We are facing the challenges when there is no water. Water. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know water is everything. Uh, water is everything. Uh -huh. If there is no water, you cannot do anything. All right, okay. Mm. Shamba Shape Up is here. Mm. Yeah. And uh, we always say we do our best mm. so that by the time we are leaving, yes. you're fully shaped up. Yes. yes. Okay, we'll yes. see you later. Yes. Right? Yes. See you. Yes. Good, Good work. Okay. Good work. Good All right. Work. Yes. David and Zeddy have a lovely farm. They grow maize. They have cows. And this impressive hedge of Kaliandra. And there's a vegetable garden too. Very hard-working farmers. Today, I want to help Zedi with the water supply for the kitchen area. At the moment, she uses this blue storage tank. But it's open at the top, which lets in dirt. It's also hard work to get the water out. So, we've asked Albert Bundy, a finance expert to come and give us some financial advice on how to upgrade the water storage. We have some problems because we are using the container to fetch it. Uh -huh. Then you are using more effort. There is yeah. no pressure to, 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 to like uh, bring it up? There is no. Uh -huh. It is you. It is you to struggle it. You are the pressure? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so Albert, mm. so you've had the challenges she's facing. Yes. Maybe if you could help us. We realized water and women, mm. you can't separate them. Mm, water and women go together. They mm. go together. Mm. Mm. And therefore, what we realized is that women were spending a lot of time. Mm. Sometimes they come to the bank late or they come to the group late mm. because they have gone to look for water. Leave alone the women. Mm. We also talk about the girl child. Yes. Mm. If there is no water in the family, the moment the girl child comes from the school, he has to rush and collect water. Mm -hmm. So there is a lot of time that is wasted for the girl child to study and learn education. Mm -hmm. So for SEDI, mm -hmm. I can tell you today, mm -hmm. you can open an account, you save with us. Mm -hmm. A customer can access different loans mm -hmm. to invest. So how much for interest? We only charge 1.5% per month. Mm -hmm. And then water tanks, we have from 1,000 liters mm -hmm. all the way to 
16,000 liters. Mm. Those are tanks for those customers who want portable tanks. So, if Zebi wants a new water tank straight away, she can get a loan. Most banks will ask you to open an account and deposit money first. This shows you are able to make the repayments. But what if Zebi wants to save up for the water tank and buy it later? Is it still a good idea to use a bank for savings? If you also save with us, every month when you save, we will mm. also be giving interest on your savings. Mm. So your money can also be earning interest mm. on the savings, mm. such that by the time maybe you are going to buy a tank, mm. if you had saved 50,000, you will get another savings on top, mm. which is also becomes another benefit. Mm. So there is two ways. Mm. All right. Yes. For how long can you save? When you want to save, mm. you have a goal. Mm. How much do you want to save? Mm. If, if, for instance, you want to save uh, 50,000, mm. if you want to save for one year, mm. 50,000 divided by 12 months, mm. every month you save around 4,000. Mm. Mm. In 12 months, you will have your 50,000. Mm. So it also depends on what is your ability. Mm. You, you have ability to save 4,000. Mm. Another one, they have ability to save 5,000. Another mm. one, they have ability to save 10,000. Mm. So depending on your ability, mm. you can save either longer or a shorter period mm. to attain your goal. So Albert, yes. I know you have a surprise for us today. Yes, as we have said, we need to have a nice way of collecting water mm -hmm. from the storage tank, which mm. is clean. Mm. So it's very important to set up a storage system mm. with a tap. Okay. Mm. So, as we start the work building the tank, let's recap. If you take out a loan, you get what you want quickly but you pay the bank extra money in interest charges. If you save, you have to wait longer for what you want, but the bank will pay you interest on the money you've saved. Wow! Zedi has got two tanks for her kitchen water. So, the supply will last twice as long. The top tank feeds into the bottom one through a connecting pipe. And the tanks are sealed, so there's no problem with that. Best of all, the tab at the bottom means Zedi doesn't have to pull a bucket to get the water out. Great work, team! It is very good because the water is clean and it is easy for us. When I'm using on the kitchen, when we have water, it is good. David has inseminated his cows using AI, but they have all failed to come into calf. So I've invited Jackie Kiprono from CKL Africa to give us some advice. Let's go inside and see if Jackie knows why. Now tell us uh, briefly about your cows. When was the last time you served them? Let's start with this one here. It had delivered five calves. Then instead of serving for the sixth... No more heat? Yeah, there is no more heat. Mm -hmm. yeah. How about this one? Time. Up to now, I served two times, but it did not resist. Nothing? Yeah. And that other one? That one, they never come on it. That was never come on it? Yeah. Wow, Jackie. From what I've seen, the challenge of the farmer is the feeding. If you can look at this feed, there's a lot of fiber, no energy, and there's no protein. What exactly is this mixture? I have the, 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 the maize stovers. They have already removed the, the maize cook. Yes. I mix with the bomber roots. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I put on Javka and then I keep. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you can look at the cows right now, they are filled up, their rumen is full. So it means they are getting that satisfaction. But what they are not getting is the quality of the feed. Ah, so yes. the animal is full, but the animal mm -hmm. cannot get enough nutrients to satisfy the reproduction and also sustain the normal routine, so the milk, the, the running of the body, the functioning. So feeding and AI yes. goes hand in hand. Hand in hand. If the energy is not sufficient or protein is not sufficient, they will sustain their body, the first need. So they will just be feeding, give you little milk, no reproduction. So oh. feeding is very important for reproduction to happen. Whoa. Yes. So, uh, David, yes. what part of the maize do you feed your cows? We used to feed the maize stovers. Uh -huh. The maize comb we used to take. Comb you eat? Yeah. Maize stovers eaten by the cow. Yeah. And that's after yeah, harvesting. After harvesting. The farmer need to improve the feed by adding an additive, a protein to this feed to increase the nutrient content of the feed. Okay. Without the cob, 
Mist of us alone do not have enough nutrients, especially protein for cows in calf or for milking cows. So David needs to add protein. And a very good protein in this scenario is Kupakula Gold. Kupakula Gold has a very good protein content of 52%. Since the animals are not getting enough protein, the farmer can get protein from Kupakula. And this Kupakula Gold is not only a protein, but it's a yeast metabolite. It means, since the animals are taking a lot of fiber, this uh, yeast metabolite will assist the rumen of the animal to digest the fiber. So if the animal is digesting the fiber well, the animal can be able to extract the nutrient for normal activities, for even reproduction. So the farmer will have utilized the feed that he has, and in addition, add a protein by using Kupakula Gold. It's not only protein the cows need. Minerals are also important to ensure cows come on heat on time. Since they are milking these animals, and again, we expect these animals to come back on it during that milking period. We recommend the farmer to use Makilik Super. Makilik Super will ensure the milking cows will still give you the milk. At the same time, the animal is coming back on it. Mm -hmm. And I think that is the problem with the farmer. The farmer is getting the milk, but the animals are not coming back on, on it. So Makilik Super will take care of that part of the reproductive system. And the cows will come on heat on time? Yes, they will. Aha. Uh -huh. Cooper Kula Gold is a protein, and each milking cow needs about 200 to 400 grams per day. You can add this to the dairy meal. Maklik Super is a mineral. Give each milking cow 200 grams or eight tablespoons per day, or feed ad libitum. And this? can be a very good beginning mm. of reaching the goals you had in your chart. Mm. Carol! Yes, Tony? How is it going? The going is perfect. To borrow a famous saying, Zedi now has water for life. But that's not all. Coming up after the break, we see how Kaliandra helps boost milk for cows. And making silage for cow feed all year round. Welcome back to Shamba Shape Up. We are in Bomet and we are visiting David and Zeddy. We've seen the benefits of financial planning and how to prepare cows for AI. But we also want to find out why Kaliandra is a good feed and how to make silage. No time to waste, Carol. Let's get back to work. Let's get back to work. Five years ago, David planted Kaliandra. We've invited Moses Buloa from World Agroforestry and VI Agroforestry to see how David has been getting on with his Kaliandra and whether he needs more help. So, Moses, Thank you very much for giving us your time today. Yes. So I'll go straight into it. If you compare to now, yeah. when you've been giving them Kaliandra, is there any difference? My cow was, by that time, was producing about three liters per mm -hmm. day. Mm -hmm. But after they using this, mm -hmm. you go up, up to 12 liters per day. 12 liters per, cow. per day, okay. Yeah. Kaliandra is the best. Okay. That's why I plant more, so that I feed throughout the year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you said your main issue now is that you cannot produce enough calandra to enough feed calandra. your cows. So, I, yeah. Mm -hmm. So David, uh, you said you have enough, how many cows? Three. I have three. Three. I can say uh, you need like 500 calandra shrubs for one cow, for you okay. to be able to feed it consistently for one year. Okay. So you have three cows that you have. You plant 1,500 calandra shrubs okay. for you to consistently feed your cow throughout the year. So. Moses, what are the benefits of planting Kaliandra? One, you are able to increase the milk production of your cow if mm -hmm. you feed it with Kaliandra in conjunction with the basal feed. Another advantage is uh, it controls soil erosion. The Kaliandra will get hold of the soil so that it is not washed away. True. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Another benefit is uh, uh, it gives you bees forage. You know it has so nice flowers that act as bees forage and then it can also act as a, a fence to deter other animals coming into your bomb. These roots yeah. grow laterally. They can fix nitrogen for the next four meters from okay. the head where it is. 
will not yeah. require to buy nitrogen fertilizer. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. So Kaliandra has several benefits. Uh -huh. yeah. All right. Kaliandra has so many benefits, including using the branches for firewood and letting one tree in every 20 meters grow tall for seeds. But how should it be prepared when being used as a feed? We are going to the chaff cutter to find out. Okay, Moses, what's the first thing we should know? It is good to know the weight of your cow. Can you tell us the weight of your cow that you are feeding with Kaliandra? It's about 400 to 600, 600. Mm -hmm. between. So for that weight, uh, a cow will require six kilos of Kaliandra. Okay. Yeah. So for you to feed it well, you have to prune it in the evening, mm -hmm. yeah. and then uh, you put it under shed, yeah. wait to wilt, and then the following day, you now bring it here for you to, to do the proper mixing. Make sure that the Kaliandra should not be more than 30%. Mm -hmm. So, our feed should be one third Kaliandra and two thirds mixed feed, such as Napier grass and Boma roads. If your cow is between 400 to 600 kilograms, you need 20 kilograms of dry feeds. Kaliandra should not be more than a third of that. That's six kilograms. The other two thirds, that's 14 kilograms, should be mixed dry matter. For example, hay, maize tovas, napier grass, and boma roads. Okay, that's it. Six kilos exactly. So, let's get chopping. It's important that the Kaliandra is cut up into small pieces as it makes it easier for the cow to chew and digest. Now we need the remaining 14 kilos of mixed feed. Here it is, already weighed and cut. Now, it's very important that Kaliandra is mixed in well. If the cow eats Kaliandra alone, it can get bloated. The resulting feed can also be given to goats, chickens, and rabbits, as well as to cows. Amazing! Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, now our feed is ready, and I know our cows are going to like it. Yes. But now we need to know. Compared to when you were not using coriander, how much yes. money were you spending? So I reduced buying at a supplement from 100 shillings per cow. 100 shillings per cow, and yeah. so you have three cows. Yeah, So that three means cows. 300. Bad day. Mm -hmm. By using Kaliandra, David is saving around 9,000 Kenya shillings every month. But that's not all. David is also getting a higher milk yield. So he's making extra money there as well. The initial cost yeah. was uh, during the establishment of the Kaliandra hedges. Mm -hmm. yeah. That is when you incurred some cost. Mm -hmm. But as that now, you can continuously harvest your Kaliandra for the next 12 years. Wow. Consistently. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Mm. And now, let's catch up with the latest weather forecast. Welcome to the Shamba Shape Up Farming News for Kenya. In the coming week, we expect very little rain across Kenya. Northeastern, Upper Eastern and Lower Eastern will get no rain or very little rain of less than 5 mm. From Marsabit, Mandera, Wajia, Garissa to Isiolo, including Meru, Taraka, Embu, Machakos, Kitui and Makueni. The coastal region will see little to moderate rainfall ranging from 15 to 75 mm. This includes Lamu, Kilifi, Mombasa and Kwale. However, lower parts of Garissa, Tana River and Taita Taveta expect little to moderate rainfall ranging from 15 to 50 mm. Central Kenya will have very little rain ranging from 5 to 15 mm. This includes Nyandarwa, Nyeri, Moranga, Kirinyaga and Kiambu. Nairobi will get very little rain of up to 5 mm. North Rift and East Rift Valley will receive little to moderate amount of rain ranging from 5 to 50 mm. On the other hand, Trukana, Samburu, Laikipia and Kajiado will see very little rain ranging from 5 to 15 mm. West Rift Valley and South Rift Valley including West Pokot, Wasingishu, Nakuru, Kericho and Narok will get moderate rain of up to 50 mm. Western and Nyanza region will receive little to moderate rain ranging from 15 to 50 mm. This includes Bungoma, Busia, Kakamega, Siaya, Kisumu, Homa Bay and Yamira. 
Farmers, movement in search for pastures, especially in arid and semi-arid areas, due to low rains, can lead to spread of tick infection. Spray or dip your cows weekly using recommended acaricides to control ticks and prevent tick-borne diseases. As you have seen, rains this week are low. If weeds have invaded your farm and you want to remove them, pull them by hand or use a selective weed killer to avoid soil disturbance. Also, mulch your farm as much as you can to maintain moisture in your soil. For more tips and advice, get in touch with I Shamba on 0711-082-606. I am Brenda, see you next week on the Shamba Shape Up Farming News for Kenya. We've been talking a lot today about good nutrition for your cows. For our final story, we want to complete the process and find out how to preserve freshly cut feed by making silage. To make silage, you need a clean, dry, covered place close to the chaff cutter. And with nothing available, we decided to build one for David using cheap, locally available materials. Now, who better to help us than Jesse Kagai? from ILRI, International Livestock Research Institute. Chris, we better hurry up. I want this area to be ready for Jesse so he can show us how to make silage. Great! The roof is almost done. Now let's find David and meet our expert. Okay, Jesse. <laughs> yes. Let's start from the beginning. Why silage? If you look at the forage cycle in a year, you'll find that um, in rainy season, we always have excess of forage. And again, when it's not raining, we then have scarcity of forage. And we want to make silage so that we can have uh, forage throughout the year. So today, what yes. are we using to make silage? Today? Um, one common fodder is uh, napier, but today we are going to use uh, maize silage. The maize we are using, we are targeting a stage called Dow stage. This is the stage whereby maize has just become milky. That is the best stage because at that time the maize has the highest uh, levels of fermentable uh, sugars. So what's the difference between uh, using napier and using maize? Yes, so in maize you don't need the additives. In napier grass you need the additives. Mostly we use molasses. But then again when you come in terms of quality, Napier grass is not as of good quality as uh, maize. maize. Mm -hmm. Yes, maize is more expensive than using napier, but its quality is higher, which means more milk. Oh, well, it seems word has spread about our silage demo, and David's farmer group has arrived to see if they can join us. Welcome, everyone. The more, the merrier. And our shed is ready. It is important the fodder grass is first left in the sun to wilt for a few hours. Next, cut and place it on a clean dry sheet. We'll also need a plastic tube for the silage and some cord to tie it up. Okay, let me ask, how would a farmer know if the fodder is well dried? You need to do a simple test. You grab a bit of your fodder and squeeze it. And if there is water dripping, then that means your fodder is too wet and it requires further wilting. But if you squeeze like this and then when you release like this, it doesn't disintegrate, then that means it is in the right dry matter uh, content. We start from our tube. We fold okay. from this side. Mm -hmm. We want to make very nice pits. So when I make a small pit this side, you make the opposite side. This helps in um, making sure that when we tie the knot, it will be very tight and we won't have any air going in. You hold it like that and then you tie in between my hands. Uh, and yes. it has to be tight? Yes, it has to be very tight. Like that? Yes. <laughs> we want to turn this inside out. Until now, you can be able to enter inside and start compacting. Mm -hmm. uh, our knot should be at the center. So we will put the first bucket. So we don't want to put a very big layer because we want to do as best compacting as possible. Now next is the person who is going to compact will get inside at the silo barefooted. 
he'll uh, start uh, compacting with his feet, going round. going round, making sure that the edges are well rounded. Yes. And making sure that you don't put so much pressure that again you tear the, mm. the, 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 the tube. Eh? As he keeps doing that, we add another layer, he continues, another layer, he continues. Once we fill this uh, tube, yes, it's normally 2.5 meters long and that can carry uh, up to 300 kilos of feed. One 300 kilo bag like this will feed one cow 30 kilos a day for 10 days when mixed with other foods. Okay, time to seal the bag. We press like that because you don't want any chance that air will get in. That is tight. Yes, that is tight. So, yes. Like that. Once the bag is tied, place some heavy weights on top to make sure no air comes back in. Tie the bag to a post to make sure it doesn't fall. The silage will be ready to use in just three weeks and will keep for 12 months. I am very happy because I have seen some technical officers have already shown me on how to do the silage in a good way. So I'll be in a very good position because I have learned a lot. I see the goodness from them. I like them to return back. See you next time, right here on Shamba Shepherd.